Incredible accounts such as these beg a crucial question. Are monks some kind of superhumans? Or have they merely mastered teachings and techniques available to anyone? centuries, many have recorded instances of Buddhist masters who could levitate. Even in modern times, videos have surfaced which appear to show exactly that. Levitation, incidentally, is one of four psychic powers mentioned within Buddhist scriptures, alongside telepathy, psychokinesis, and the ability to separate the astral body from the physical body. Think of modern viral videos of monks walking over hot coals, running on top of water, being stabbed but not pierced by sharp objects, or meditating in boiling oil. A Catholic priest from the United States named Father Francis Tiso traveled to Tibet determined to look into the strange happenings taking place after the deaths of monks like the Karmapa and others. There, Tiso documented the extraordinary case of Kimpo Echo and his death in 1998. As local press reported, recently on August 29, 1998, at Dom Kamnyak in Azirong in Tibet, Kimpo Echo, 80 years of age, attained physical dissolution one day at noon, lying in bed without having suffered any recent illness while in the posture of a sleeping lion and reciting the six-syllable mantra, he attained Buddha in the primordial basic matrix of Alpha Purity, his heart of clear light reality perfected beyond the intellect. As his body dissolved into light, his wrinkles vanishing, he seemed like an eight-year-old child with a beautiful complexion. His body gradually diminished in size, and at the end, he attained Buddha. Not even his nails and hair were left behind. It was just like a bird flying from a rock. People nearby have no idea where it might have gone. In other words, H.O. didn't so much die as he just disappeared. This was an example of the ancient phenomenon known as the rainbow body. This means that successful Dzogchen practitioners like Kim Po Echo can, in effect, reverse the process of collapse, returning the dense matter of their bodies to a state of pure light, the rainbow body. Since we mentioned the mysterious death of the 12th Karmapa, take a look at this photo of him during the Black Crown ceremony in which he also achieved the rainbow body, appearing almost transparent in the photo. Tibetan Buddhist Dzogchen Kinpo Choga Rinpoche recorded the death of his teacher as such. My precious teacher, Lama Karma Rinpoche, has passed. I received the extraordinary news from my friends in Tibet that the sacred body of my kind teacher has dramatically shrunk in size. Lama Karma was about 5 foot 9 inches tall, but two weeks after he passed, his seated body has now shrunk to about 8 inches which means his body, including his skeleton, shrank nearly 80%. Another fascinating case is the case of Lama Dashi Dorja Itigalov, known as the Living Dead Buddhist Monk. He was born in 1852 and devoted his entire life on spiritual practice. When he was 75, he told other monks that he was ready to die and to begin meditation ceremonies and funeral rites. He started to meditate on his own, and later the monks also joined him. Itigalov died while meditating. He left behind a testament in which he said that he should be buried in the same position that he was when he died, sitting in a lotus position. In 1955 and 1977, 
While Ichigalov's body was being taken out, the monks were surprised to see no signs of physical decay on the body. It was only in September 11, 2002, that the body was finally exhumed in front of the members of Buddhist traditional Sangha. The body was later transferred to Ivolginsky Datsan, a residence of today's Hambo Lama. The body was examined by monks, scientists, and pathologists. The statement was issued that the body looked like it died only 36 hours ago. The body was well preserved with no signs of decay whatsoever, whole muscles and inner tissue intact and with soft joints and skin all in place. For two years after the exhumation of Atigalov's body, it does not perish nor decay, no fungus nor any other sign that this is the body of a dead man. The Buddhist monks approach him as a living person and shake hands with him. Some monks even claim that Hamo Lama Ichigalov is still alive and is in a nirvana-like state. In the early 1980s, a professor from the prestigious Harvard School of Medicine named Herbert Benson led a team of researchers deep into the Himalayan mountains of Tibet with the intent of studying the monks at remote Buddhist monasteries, specifically their alleged ability to manipulate their bodies through a practice called Ji Tumo, the inner fire meditation. The results of this study were stunning, as described in Nature magazine in 1982. In a monastery in northern India, thinly clad Tibetan monks sat quietly in a room where the temperature was a chilly 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a yoga technique known as Ji Tumo, they entered a state of deep meditation. Other monks soaked three by six foot sheets in cold water at 49 degrees and placed them over the meditator's shoulders. For untrained people, such frigid wrappings would produce uncontrolled shivering. If body temperatures continue to drop under these conditions, death can result. But it was not long before steam began rising from the sheets. As a result of body heat produced by the monks during meditation, the sheets dried in about an hour. Further, the team documented monks spending freezing nights when temperatures would drop to zero degrees Fahrenheit on rocky ledges high in the Himalayas, wearing nothing but cotton shawls. The monks did not huddle together or even shiver, instead sleeping through the night comfortably. Tangibly, Benson and his team found that the monks could raise the temperature of their fingers and toes by up to 17 degrees using G Tumo. Additionally, they could lower their metabolism during meditation by 64%. For reference, an ordinary person's metabolism drops about 10 to 15% during sleep. An enormous polished slab of stone laid ominously. After a few minutes, a large group of monks approached the slab carrying musical instruments. They began to play, slowly increasing the tempo and volume of the music. Suddenly, the giant stone began to sway, and then, miraculously, it took off into the air as if shot out of a cannon. A few minutes later, the stone landed on top of the rock wall at a perfectly precise position and angle. What type of knowledge did these monks have of the secret laws of physics and acoustic levitation, secrets sought after for decades by entities like NASA and the Chinese government? Secrets, some suggest, were used to build unexplained wonders 